Hello everyone and welcome back to Ergo Hack 2. Right now we are here with a very special guest, the founder of MinSwap, Long Nugent. Long, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, so far so good. Thank you for joining us today. I know a lot of the hackers have been looking forward to watching this interview with you and catching up on MinSwap progress. So question number one, have you participated in a hackathon before? Do you have any experience when someone says hackathon, what, what comes to your head? What do you think of? Yeah, I actually, I participated in hackathon a lot in my university. So I, I think that every year I participate in at least one hackathon. And particularly in when I was in Japan, I part, I went to a hackathon, new hackathon every weekend. So I think I, I have some experience with this. How many hackathons total do you think you've participated in? Um, many, but um, most are not very serious. The, the serious one are maybe three or four. Wow, very cool. And I guess that, that gets us started on a good point there. So. For someone that's coming into Ergo Hack 2, maybe it's their first project, their first time even looking at code, and they want to build something on Ergo. For anyone getting started on one of these projects and their first hackathon, what's your advice on sort of the best approach for getting familiar with everything and you know delivering a, a cool product when it's all said and done? Yeah, so um, a hackathon is very short, has very short time duration. So I would say that focus on the proof of concept and the pitch and just remove every other unnecessary you, you don't need a fancy ui with animation you, you need to need a proof of concept and a good pitch and uh that's um i think that be uh, um uh, everything you need in in the hackathon to win i see yeah i think that would be my advice too i think a lot of people especially when they're first getting started with hackathons get caught up in things like the UI, and they don't focus enough big picture. They'll spend all this time trying to fix one bug for hours, but you don't realize the hackathon's only 36 hours. And I think solidifying the, the big picture idea and being able to eloquently explain it and back it up with some code is what I've seen work the best. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Were hackathons how you got introduced to programming was that your first programming experience or how did you get started with programming and i guess at what what age did you get started yeah it was in high school actually i i got uh so um you see a bit of personal story so in, in vietnam uh there is a kind of like uh a, a, a high school where they have different classes for different subjects so they have a math classes and the uh informatics classes and i didn't get a high enough mark to get into the math classes so i joined the informatics classes and uh, uh, there was a, a teacher there just introduced me to the um, informatics uh, high school contest for for high school students and, and that's how i got introduced to programming kind of uh, incidentally so around the beginning to middle of high school yeah, um, uh, when I was 15 years old, when I started high school. That's very cool. And that seems like some of the best developers seem to start at that age. I think something that, well, at least in American schools that could be done better is that a lot of my programming friends, the first time we really look at any code is first semester of freshman year of college when we're already 18, 19 years old. Where it seems like across the world, I've realized they expose students to programming and computer concepts at a much earlier age in high school. Yeah, it, it, it depends. Um, so it depends on the interest of the students. So I just got introduced to programming via some high school contest, which is uh, totally randomly. But uh, I, I got hooked into it and I, I realized that I am decent at programming. So just keep uh, uh, going through it and choose an engineering major in university. I see. And then from what we can tell, that's worked out well so far because the project that you've built on Cardano, MinSwap, has had, you know, what I would say, some very impressive traction and, and success so far. I think a lot of people think that you guys sort of 
got off to a slow start. But something that I had thought from the beginning was that the tech team seemed so strong that it was only a matter of time until the cream sort of rose to the top. And then I think once you guys came out with FISO, I think that's when things sort of seemed to really take off for you guys. And so how did you guys come up with the FISO idea? And yeah, if you could talk a little bit about the the success you guys have had with that. Oh yeah, FISO was an interesting story. So um, it's begin when different projects uh, started opening up um, ISPO to either raise funds in ADA or either airdrop their tokens and um, it uh, siphoned uh, the delegation from other SPOs and um, there was long Twitter stress on it and we think that um, but there, there is a way to distribute tokens which now creating our own pool and, and that's how FISO begin where we start uh, planning the, the function, the formula, rewarding functions and uh, planning, uh, timelining. And then we start doing it uh, without much expectation, right? So we only um, so we only give out 2.5% of token for a drop. And um, I think it got uh, much of the community support uh, to become successful. Um, and that was uh, beyond our expectation. I see. And maybe something you guys had foresaw or something your intuition had told you, or maybe you didn't see this at all. But I think the most brilliant thing about the FISO and what you guys did was how you created this dynamic where the stake pools, the number one thing that they want is delegations. So the stake pools get delegations. They can still distribute the rewards. And then the delegators get MinSwap tokens on top of that. And I think for MinSwap, it gave you guys the utmost goodwill to the community. And everyone can sort of take a step back and say, obviously, these people are in it for the right reasons. They're taking this sort of long-term approach. Their way of doing the FISO only really benefits them long-term. It wasn't like 10 epochs of us getting the rewards and, you know, we can run off. So I, I think... That was brilliantly done. And so you said you you weren't really expecting this level of community support when you guys had first had this idea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I didn't expect it to really boom that much. Yeah, it, it has uh, gotten a bit back now recently, which is a good thing. But I think that um, uh, it still come up as a win-win for both MinSwap and the SPL community. That's right. And last I checked, I think someone said it was at 77 million. Is it still somewhere close to there? I think it's more than uh, 220 million now. 220 million? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, I don't know. What, what, 100? Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry. It's 120 million. 100. Okay, cool. I mean, that's still just mind blowing. So, very a, a job well done. Yeah. So, speaking of MinSwap, I'm curious to know, I'm sure the hackers would like to know as well. How did you guys originally come up with the name? And is there an interesting backstory on that? Yeah, me so. Oh, so we uh, so we want to make a build deck. And um, basically, we uh, find the name of the food because the trend was food, food deck, uh, pancake swap, bakery swap, etc., sushi swap. But every food name is taken. So we just, uh, we try to find like short word that is not taken and we found mean, which is a, a short word has some kind of meaning and it's not taken and yeah, we, we go with it. So mean stand for minimal, min, minimal time, minimal cost, kind of. Mm, I, I like that. So. Uh, it's basically an ode to a seamless experience and an efficient experience. So I would like to dive in a little bit. So you guys, I think, are the only decks that have came out with anything on the testnet. I know that you guys had run into some issues. Well, I, I think it's also fair to say, you know, at least uh, from the Ergo and Cardano communities, people in large part know that the flag that you guys got was blown out of proportion. 
And I think long term will serve you guys well because I remember that day that I've never seen so many articles written about MinSwap. So I think, yeah. you know, if, if anything, it worked for great publicity as opposed from taking away from uh, you know, what you guys are bringing to the table. So, uh, yeah, what were your sort of emotions going through that experience, and how are things now with MinSwap sort of after that testnet situation? Yeah, the testnet was to uh, test the, the dark. Yeah, and, and yeah, we tested like uh, what really many feedback to fix uh, fix the bugs, and uh, actually we we run the test net with with the with the um, anticipation of it being only able to process one transaction per per, per block. So, uh, but some some people are uh, not happy about it. Yeah, whatever is <laughs> what over is over. So. Um, now we have it's actually it's trigger a lot of research and tutorial and guide for best practices to write concurrent smart contract on Cardano, and I think it's uh, a good thing that a lot there there appear to be lots of resources for developers to learn from now, and we have we have built our short term solution and we de deployed it on testnet and. Um, yeah, it is run um, recently, uh, and we are going to uh, to uh, restart our testnet soon after we got the concurrency solution in place, and we can estimate how much users it, it can uh, onboard at once. Cool. Yeah, no, that that sounds good. We appreciate the update. It's very cool to see you guys sort of taking that leap and, and showing the initiative. And I think you know, a lot of people naturally will take that and use that as a vulnerability. Ah, oh, you know, these people don't know what they're doing. But I think to people like us and the true believers in the community know that you guys are almost like the pioneers in this space. And you guys have been the one to sort of put your name on the line and put yourself out there. So that's very admirable that MinSwap is doing that. Uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And and speaking of that, so all right, you guys are building a DEX right now. If you weren't building a DEX right now, what do you think your brain would be focused on? Are there any other projects that you've thought about? Like, oh, if I wasn't building this DEX right now, I'd probably build this. Yeah, probably something relating to NFT. So so it's just, it's just me. So I, I think that NFT is fun, maybe an NFT game or something. But yeah, I think a DEX is what we need for a for, uh, young uh, ecosystem. We, we need a DEX, so that's why we started to build a DEX on April. And we've we gotten very close to uh, release now. That is very cool and very exciting. So it sounds like if you weren't building a DEX, you would look to build some sort of fun NFT game. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> that sounds awesome. You like playing video games? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was a fan of video games, you know, play a lot in uh in middle school and high school and and when i got to college uh, there are too many fun <laughs> uh, things relating to program like hackathon and uh, fun projects and just uh i stopped playing video games uh since i got to university cool yeah that, that sounds awesome so hopefully maybe you'll build an nft game one day in the future that would be cool to see yeah there, there are tons of nft games right now i i i, I, I will need to wait until it get less crowded and start to be a, a cool game yeah but but uh, it's, uh we need to get the next into the decentralized state first we need to hand it over to the community first before we can move over to any new project Right. Cool. I think that's the right way to go about it. So with that being said, there's another DEX that's going on is the Ergo DEX and then there's, you know, the Ergo Hackathon. What are sort of your thoughts, I guess, generally about how Ergo and Cardano work together and sort of what's the possible harmony that you see between the two? Yeah. So Cardano and Ergo has an uh, interesting relationship, especially with the Emergo partnership. And I see that uh, Ergo is like uh, a younger version of Cardano with faster development cycle. So uh, we see that a lot of innovation and research from Ergo is being uh, being uh, used in Cardano right now. For example, the HUSD protocol and Sigma USD is being used as a as a 
foundation of uh, the, the Jared stablecoin for Cardano right now. And, and I expect to see more innovation and research from Ergo being bring to Cardano. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I think a lot of us are excited for the different ways that the two blockchains can work together ultimately to make a better ecosystem for everybody. Last question, does MinSwap have any plans to bring Ergo into the mix? And if so, what does that look like? Yeah, so two things um, I'm looking for at Ergo now is the first one is Oracle. The Oracle pool is uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, implementation of Oracle in a uh, UTXO model. And the second one that I'm looking forward to is the Ergo Bridge that can bring more assets to be traded on MinSwap. That's very cool. That sounds exciting. And like both of us know, there's a lot of exciting capabilities and features that are on the way between the two. And I guess last question. So currently for MinSwap, I know we had the testnet. You said you guys are maybe thinking about getting another testnet out. What's sort of your guys' timeline for when you're expecting to launch? Or is there not really a date? Are you guys playing it by ear right now with how the testnet Yeah, goes? The, the plan is uh, at the beginning of October. So maybe the next one or two weeks. So just um, subscribe to our Twitter and Discord for updates. Cool. Well, that sounds good. Long, thank you so much for coming on and guest speaking at Ergo Hack 2. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to the hackathon. Um, maybe I'm too, uh, too uh, busy for hackathon now, but I really miss the hackathon days. You were very really fun. Yeah, it really is a great time to build out your ideas. And I think it's it's very promising to the hackers that maybe they can build a project that turns into the next Minswap. So yeah, cool. sure. Well, again, thank you very much. And Ergo Hack 2 people, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you guys soon.